My coffee's wearing off, so I'm going to need to pray. All right. right? (laughs) Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this opportunity to share your word, Lord, and just uh, affirm some principles and encourage uh, some principles from your word, Lord, that we can uh, just implement into our families, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. So uh, I know I'm picking up the end of the, the tail end of this thing here, and I know I'm the there's only one thing standing in between you guys and the popcorn, and that's the patriarchy right here. Because we're, <laughs> we're, we're gonna, I'm going to preach a little bit about the patriarchy. And uh, when I first started putting this together, I decided it was going to be the power of the patriarchy. And um, I had all this, this big list of information of stuff that we need to be doing as dads and fathers. And then I realized most of you guys know all that stuff. And most of you guys are doing it. And I thank the Lord for that, to have uh, good men in the church raising families up for the Lord. So I changed it to the gift of the patriarchy. And I want it to be an encouraging sermon, and encouraging for the men that are, that are raising their families for the Lord, and also encouraging for the children and the women. And <clears throat> I'm going to, you guys go ahead and turn over to Romans 1 and be thankful that I wasn't the first one because it's got 54, 54 verses in it. But, <laughs> but turn over to Romans 1. Not Romans 1, I'm sorry, Numbers 1. Numbers 1 has 54 verses in it. And uh, while you're turning there, I want to tell you a little story, and I'm going to wake everybody up with a little juicy gossip here. But I won't tell you who it's, who it's about, but um, I never will. But I know a man a lot like us, King James only, has a family, taking his family to church three times a week. And he's standing outside at the bottom of his steps, and he sees his daughter run out of the door. Screen door slams. She runs out of the door. She's going somewhere. She's got short shorts on. And he knew, because he's got a lot of the same convictions as us, that's totally wrong. She's showing her nakedness. She's showing her thighs. And he said, whoa, whoa, whoa. We're going to put a stop to this. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's go, let's go talk about this. He goes back inside and he talks with the daughter and the mother and the mother says, listen, you handle the son. You handle the boys and I'll handle the girls. And he backed down. And he backed down from his wife saying that she's going to handle the way the daughters dress and she'll handle the girls and he'll handle the boys. And this is the way their family went. And it's a tragic story, but... It's a typical story in our country. And it's a typical story within the the Christian community. So what is the patriarchy? The patriarchy, I had to look up a definition. First off, this, the patriarchy is a controversial subject. And this is going to make a lot of uh, feminists upset when they hear about the patriarchy, you know. Uh, There's an army of cat ladies out there all that get upset about this type of subject. So uh, the definition of the patriarchy is a system of social or government, a a system of society or government in which the father or eldest male is head of the family and descendant and descendant is traced through the male line. Now, uh, if you're in Romans one, uh, go to verse two, it says, Oh, numbers, numbers one. You're right. Numbers one. So uh, the first thing is, do you guys think that the Bible is important? Amen. Do you guys think that God gave us the Bible with everything we need in it? Yes. So every word in there is important and everything he does in there is important. In Romans, or, uh, in Numbers one, two, it says, take ye the sum of all the congregation of the children of Israel after their families by their house, by the house of their fathers and the number of their names, every male by their poles. And if you, if you go on down to Numbers 1.18, it says, And they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month, and they declared their pedigrees after their families by the houses of their fathers, according to the number of, of the names, from 20 years old and upward, by their poles. Listen, if you read that entire chapter, you will see a lot of fathers. You'll see the fathers of people. Fathers are important to the Lord. Fathers are, are one of the things recorded in the Bible of people. 
I looked up the word or the, uh, the phrase son of, and it's in the Bible 1,164 times. And we're going to look at every one. No, I'm just kidding. But, uh, <laughs> but God puts it in there because he's talking about the fathers and the fathers matter. Yes. It matters who your father is. It matters down the line when we're, if we're successful, our descendants will remember us. Um, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they were, they were patriarchs from the Old Testament. And it, when you're reading through numbers, you'll see there's, these are patriarchs. These are guys that are recognized because their kids are doing something here. Uh, so the patriarchy is father-led homes and father-led society, or, and, and man, husband, father-led societies. The opposite of patriarchy in the Bible, if you go to Isaiah 3.12, it says, as for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. O oh, my people, they which lead thee cause thee to err, and destroy the way of thy paths. It's a curse to be ruled by children and women. Societies, God set up his, his, his system of government and his system of family with fathers, fathers leading the home and the government. And we can see the, uh, the problems with this. Women pastors, pastors has is, is touched on this before. Women pastors, you can't hardly find one that actually have the right gospel. Not one. And, you know, I don't know if you guys have been keeping up with any of the news, but in the Senate, we had a couple ladies that uh, had a nice little discussion in the Senate about, you know, one lady criticized her eyel fake eyelashes and another is talking about her bleach blonde hair. And... Uh, <laughs> And this is, the, this is the kind of things that happen, but, you know, this is God's system. In Ephesians 5, 23, it says, For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. And Christ, Christ is the head of the man. And um, one of the big arguments against the patriarchy. So the, the, the first portion here, I, wanna, I wanted to kind of define the patriarchy, the nature of the patriarchy. And uh, one of the big oppositions of the patriarchy, oh, it's, it's oppression. The patriarchy's oppressing, you know, the, these, uh, these ladies on the college campuses. The patriarchy's oppressing us. And um, it is, it is oppressing something. But the patriarchy is not oppressing godly womanhood. It's protecting and cultivating godly womanhood. Um, it facilitates it. Without the patriarchy, without men leading their homes and providing for their families, you can't have godly womanhood. The patriarchy does oppress whoredom, right. whoremongers. Uh, it does oppress fornication and, and adultery and wickedness and all forms of sin. A father that's leading his family is going to oppress these sins. He is going to squash all of that because he knows the defilement, the destruction that it causes to sons and daughters. The long-term uh, repercussions to this is what's destroying, in our, in our country, it's what's destroying Christianity. It's what's destroying multi-generational Christianity. The patriarchy is harsh. It's harsh on sin. A godly man that's leading his family is harsh on sin. He, he's not going to put up with it. As a father and as a patriarch, we are looking to cultivate sons to be great husbands for someone else's godly daughters. We're looking to raise daughters to be godly wives and mothers to another godly man that loves the Lord and wants to raise a family for the Lord. And as, as a pa the patriarchy is looking around to the young ones from other families and encouraging them to grow up to be those people, those people that are going to serve the Lord, maybe marry their, their children, but they're encouraging and creating the atmosphere to have multi-generational Christianity. The alternative to submission to God's authority is exploitation. Rejection of the patriarchy will inevitably result and has resulted in exploitation of women. This, uh, 
the, my first point is, is, is kind of defining the patriarchy, but um, I'll get into my second point in just a minute here. But the patriarchy, the exploitation, whenever you step out from under God's authority, or whenever you step out from under God's protection, you're, you're, you're open to be exploited by wicked men. You're open to be exploited by wicked women. You're open to be exploited by this wicked world. And you're open to be exploited by the wicked one, which is Satan. You're opening yourself up. And we see so many. We all know the tragic stories. The story I just told of the teenage girl that ran out of her house with short shorts on. Later on in her life, just not, not too long later, she was actually, you know, she made mistakes. She was defiled by a wicked man. This is a typical story in America. If you're, the people will say, hey, if you're not in business, don't advertise. Well, let me tell you what. If you're advertising, you're obviously in business. So it's for the patriarchy to put a stop to these sins. He's the protection. He's the first line of defense. And he's the one that should stand up for these things. And uh, so my second point is, because we know this man, right? We know this. We're not going to put up with this. We're going to put a stop to it. But my second point is encouragement of the patriarchy. Because it's tough nowadays to stand up. There's a whole world against you guys. In Genesis 18, 19, it says, For I know him, that he will command his children and his house after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment, and the Lord may that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he hath spoken of him. This is Abraham, the patriarch, and God, like I think you just mentioned it, God, uh, God decided to tell him about Lot in Sodom because he knew that he was going to raise his family for the Lord. He was going to stand up and command them to do what's right. And I think that there's a big hole today in, uh, in our society where men are not encouraged to stand up and lead their families. They're actually shamed for being men. And I've got proof of this. Uh, when I'm, when, let me back up a little bit. When I say men, I'm talking about men that love the Lord, are reading their Bibles, are, have convictions to serve the Lord and raise their families for the Lord, and <clears throat> not spoiled brat boys <laughs> that are consumed with selfish hobbies and toys Video games, I'm not talking about these people. I'm talking, I'm talking right now to men, to men that raise their families for the Lord. Uh, the world is using shame to keep men from leading their families. Uh, the world wants little men that are docile, but God wants big men that stand for truth. And the attack that Satan has on fatherhood and men, it's devastating. I don't know about you guys. I know some of you guys are my age, so you may have seen these same shows. But I grew up watching The Simpsons and Married with Children. I pray to the Lord that your families didn't let you watch these shows. But they were on TV when I was a kid. And the, this, is, this is social programming. They, uh, these shows attacked fatherhood. They attacked the patriarchy. Every turn they made, they made the father look like an idiot. Um, I'm sure there's more media out there doing the same now. Every commercial, it's always the father uh, being a big dummy or uh, being consumed by his uh, own lusts or consumed by toys or consumed by hobbies or something else. And, um, and it's, it's, in it's, it's encouraging men to be this way. But truthfully, most, most Christian men aren't this way. You know, I know in this church, we're not this way. And, uh, but this is the discouragement given to men. Uh, constant commercials, uh, constant media. And this is the devil's plan. It's been this way for a long time to attack the father and the leader of home, the home. Well, let me tell you what, this is not God's view of the, of the father. Uh, God wants fathers in a place of honor and responsibility. Because when... When the honor of, of being a father and leading your family is taken away, then the responsibility is also eliminated. When, not to God, but I'm saying in society, when fathers are not honored, they will cease to be honorable. 
they, if they're not honored for what they should be, then there will not, people will not be encouraged to be that. And that is the point. That's the, uh, a big flaw in society. I'll tell you, we all know that it's the New World Order. It's Satan working. It's communism. They're trying to destroy the family so that the state can become God. But the truth is they're attacking fatherhood and they're attacking the honor that fathers should have. And this is, I feel, that this is one of the reasons that many young men don't go out and start families. They don't see the honor in starting a family and leading a family. Uh, they don't, and that's another reason that, so the, the marriage rates are low and also the birth rates are low. They don't want to be fathers because they feel like it's a losing battle, that the society is just against you on it. So I do want to thank the Lord for my family because I've seen this. I've seen what can happen in our families. And many of you may have experienced this too, but uh, we don't have a TV. You know, my kids don't watch Married with Children and the Simpsons. Uh, they don't have a TV. Uh, they, they read the Bible, you know. They, they read books like Numbers that say, <laughs> they, most of them have read Numbers. So, <laughs> so they see that the fathers are honored. And whenever somebody makes fun of their father, they stand up for it. They say, whoa, what are they making fun of fathers? Fathers lead families. Fathers support family. Fathers protect why? Fathers protect the mommy. Fathers help out. Fathers, fathers are there to teach us the Bible every night. They're, they're, they're thinking, what are these people thinking? Making fun? What, fathers aren't stupid. Fathers are wise. Fathers are somebody you come to when you have questions. Fathers are somebody that you come to when you want to make life decisions. You come, you come to him and you, you have wisdom there from the Lord. So equipping, equipping the tasks. Now, most, most of the first sermon that I did on this was just equipping the fathers, you know. But, uh, but equipping, equipping the fathers, in Ephesians 4.11 it says, And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. God gave us the church and teachers in the church and pastors to perfect us, to encourage us, to to make us a, a full, total, strong man, to make our wives full, strong wives and our children full, godly children. The church is equipping men and leading men uh, that's why we have Brother Fannin preaching the Bible for us every week. And we encourage men to read their own Bibles. And, <clears throat> and this, is, this is how we get equipped. Uh, if we look at Ephesians 6 in the armor of God, it's a great example of how we can be equipped, be fully equipped to lead our families. Uh, it gives us... It gives us a, a list of different things uh, we can speak to our children about, about our faith. We can speak to our children about our salvation. We can speak to our children about uh, the word of God, how to handle the sword of the spirit and uh, get others saved. Uh, we, can, we can read through our Bibles and we can get from the church. The church equips us to have these convictions and principles to stand up for in life. But this man here, that I was just talking about, he had those convictions. He had those principles. He had that Bible. But he still got steamrolled. <clears throat> we should, and I'm going to get to that in a second. We should provide for our families at work, and we should fix stuff at the house. We should, you know, get that yard mode. But you can hire somebody to fix stuff at your house. You can hire an unsaved man to mow your yard. You can, uh, you can get somebody to do all the physical work around. But you know what you can't get somebody to replace? You have to get a saved person to do spiritual work. If you're going soul winning, you got to have somebody saved. You can't hire an unsaved man to do that. And guess what? In your family, your kids only have one father. You're the only one that can do the job and, uh, for your children. And it's a spiritual job. It's not a physical job. You're the only one that God's chosen for, to do it. Now, fast forward years later, the teenage girl that ran out of the house down the stairs, the father now, is, uh, she's, she's, she's made a lot of mistakes. She's been taken advantage of because she stepped out from underneath his authority. And now he's walking her down an aisle just like this. He's walking her down an aisle in a white dress. 
and he's heading down towards a man that he knows she shouldn't marry. He paid for the wedding. He paid for the dress. He walked her down and he gave her away to a man he knew wouldn't work and support her, to a man that he knew was a fornicator, knew was a drug addict, but he did it anyway. Why did he do it? Has anybody got an answer? <laughs> uh, I think he did it because the, the peer pressure of society and his church was to just go along to get along. He had the principles, he had the abilities, he just didn't do it. He didn't stand up for what was right. And he should have. And the prices paid were heavy. In First Corinthians, First Chronicles 4, 34, 30, 36, it says, These mentioned by their names were princes in their families, and the house of their fathers increased greatly. If we stand up for the Lord, if we stand up for what's right, if we are patriarchs that don't back down and have these biblical convictions and stand up for them and don't just get rolled, steamrolled by society on these things, then we will have the increase greatly also. You can have the increase greatly. I know many of you are a great example because you've had tons of, tons of kids. Thank the Lord. You're having increase greatly and you're having fruit in your children. We have children here that we've all raised up, different families that have raised that, that go soul winning and teach the Bible and love the Lord. Uh, this is the great fruit. This is the building a great house that God's talking about. And uh, in Deuteronomy eleven nineteen it says, And ye shall teach them your children, speaking of them, when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. <clears throat> like I mentioned before, I think we're all fathers here, and I pray to the Lord that all of us are. Men that sit down and teach their children the scriptures. Men that when their children want to ha have a question, they come to their father. They come to their father because they want wisdom from the, from the Bible. They want, to be, uh, they want to be in line with God's authority and in, in line with God's will. And they can come to their father and they know that he'll point them in the right direction. Uh, <clears throat> and in Exodus 3.15 it says, And God said, Moreover unto Moses, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, the Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob hath sent me unto you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. Multi-generational Christianity. <clears throat> A memorial unto all generations. Listen, Jesus, the rock, is our memorial unto all of our generations into the future. This Bible that we have, this is something that we can pass down, teaching to our children, and it will last for generation after generation. Multi-generational Christianity is the goal that I'm pushing here for the patriarchy. And it only happens through fathers. It only happens when fathers stand up, take the stand, have the convictions, and then actually implement them in their families. <clears throat> Uh, I had all kinds of different sections in here and stuff, but um, one of the sections was the tears of the patriarchy. Because, you know, you guys know my son, that um, uh, Luke, that, that's here. He's not here tonight, so I'll, I'll get to talk about him. Maybe he'll never hear this. But, uh, <laughs> but I know you, you guys have seen me cry and, um, <laughs> uh, with my wife and, and her issues. I, I'm pretty sure I cried at our wedding, too. I'm not sure. I can't, I can't quite remember. But, uh, but I do remember when you went through your health scare, that I was in tears quite a bit. And then seeing my son cry at his wedding, that's touching. And then seeing my son cry when his first child was born and having those overwhelming emotions that God gives us to love and protect <clears throat> uh, the family that God's given him. And just seeing that in him and uh, remembering the tears that my father shed when, I, when we had Luke. And he had some uh, little health scares. And my father was in tears calling me because he was uh, very sad. He was born under very similar circumstances, a C-section and whatnot. But, um, and then remembering, uh, 
And uh, just knowing this, seeing the tears that my father shed, that I've shed, that Luke has shed, the third generation down here, it just lets me know that, um, that men that love the Lord and aren't ashamed to, ashamed to stand up and lead their families for the Lord, uh, they're going to have this fruit, this, uh, this increase into the future. In Proverbs 9, 18, it says, <clears throat> Where there is no vision, the people perish, but he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Men, don't be ashamed to be the patriarch. Don't be ashamed to stand up, make a stand. You know what to do. You have the convictions. Just stand up and do it. And don't let be pushed around. And children and wives, defend the honor of your fathers. Vehemently defend the honor of your fathers. Your fathers love the Lord. They want to raise their families for the Lord. Defend it. Don't let people uh, uh, um, take away from that honor. <clears throat> And if you defend the, defend the honor of your father, he will serve you and protect you and he'll provide for you and he'll give you wisdom and love just like the father in heaven does for us. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you tonight, Lord, that we've uh, heard so many great messages. Lord, I pray that you just bless the fellowship that we're going to have afterwards, Lord, and just uh, help us all to go away from here uh, stronger and serve you. And Lord, protect us as we go out into this rain. In Jesus' name, amen.